So today we're gonna to talk about how to design a part like this that can actually be strong and robust with 3D printing. These types of parts are often used for mounting something to a wall. It might be like conduit or wire or whatever it happens to be. You have some kind of mounting bracket and then a 90 degree rotated flat plate coming out from the side. And the issue with this is, is that it's very often, if printed, very brittle like that. Now they're designed like this in order to minimize material. Processes like molding are not able to have thick, chunky parts because you have shrinkage and all kinds of other issues that come up. So you end up creating these really thin sort of pieces, which even when molded are very susceptible to fatigue and all sorts of other issues, isotropic or not. But then once you then combine that with the non-isotropic nature of 3D printing, then you can get something that can be very brittle. Now you can get around it a little bit by picking good materials and of course using better print settings than we used on this stuff, but it's best if you actually design the part for the process. So if you're starting out with a simple part like this that is molded and you are trying to get it mass production 3D printed at a large print farm like ours, then the first thing you should do is try to take the injection molded design and just optimize it for printing a little bit. The very first and the biggest solution is to just put a big old fat chamfer there. Try to blend those pieces as much as possible. Have as much of the surface area of the vertical component merge with the surface area of the bottom component. Now a chamfer is a simple solution, but you can also do lofts and blends and all kinds of other things like that. So that now this becomes really robust because you have this really thick area that kind of serves as an I-beam against the breaking force of the layer lines. And of course, the thing to do also is make sure that all the vertical edges are rounded because this improves reliability, print time, and everything else, and make sure that you blend any other corners throughout the place. That way you don't have any stress concentrations on those layer lines. These are all very simple things that can take something that will fail in the field and turn it into a reliable part. And again, since printing, doesn't have a problem with thick areas. This does not increase the cost of the part because that's effectively hollow, but those thick areas serve as high beams because the outer skin serves as the point of strength and the inner part just moves the moment of inertia out away from the rest of it. But this is not ideal. This is forcing an injection molding to work inside of 3D printing. If you actually wanna make a 3D printing optimized part, you start with a brick and then you go backwards from there. Molding is very much about adding small thin features together, but printing is about removing the features that you want and cutting them out of a block. That's the best way to think about it. In this case, you go ahead and you start with the part that you have and the constraints that you have to work within. Then you start to create the features inside of it. You remove the conduit support and then you cut out the holes where you want them and you use countersinks in order to make them reliable. If you wanted to, you can maybe shave off a little bit of that, but this overall block is indestructible. No matter how much I whack it, it's not going to break apart because it has so much of that internal strength from the outer skin. So whenever you're designing 3D printed parts, you want to make them blocky, you want to make them chunky, you want to make them fat and lugubrious. These are the way to design these type of parts. This way, when you mount this inside of a car or inside of a machine that will be under vibration for forever, maybe a little bit of load from the conduit wearing back and forth, you have something that will be reliable probably longer than a molded part ever would be because you don't have these small fragile pieces that can have crack propagation over time. You have ones with basically so much engineering margin just implicit to the process that you are able to have it be really reliable while still maintaining a very highly affordable part because again, this is not a solid brick, this is hollow, which means that it uses minimally more material than if it was refined down to thin walls. All the surface area of this is now just in the outer surface area of this, and it's a place where it's more functional, more reliable, and more useful. So this is how you would design a 90 degree part to actually be mass producible with 3D printing and to hit all the engineering specs that you might have for that project. If you have a need for mass production, go ahead and reach out to us and we can get you a quote or just subscribe to this channel for more content about how to design for mass production 3D printing. Have a great day, everybody.